Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, boys and girls, when the Lord decides to show men what real power is, he doesn't mince words. And when the Lord allows nature to cut loose, there aren't many structures that are left standing. Perhaps he wants to show us who's the boss of the universe after all, even with our atomic and hydrogen bombs. Well, it's about time to get into our story. This is the experience Bill and his rangers had with nature's most powerful and potent weapon. It's the story... Nature's Vacuum Cleaner. Gigantic thunderheads are passing over the knotty pine country, and the monsters lash out with angry streaks of lightning. The air is muggy as the warm front battles against a cold front, trying to push it out of the way. A terrific turbulence takes place in the atmosphere. Conditions are perfect for a tornado to let loose and give the earth a vicious pasting. The Weather Bureau puts out a severe storm warning. The men at the Weather Bureau watch the sky with apprehension. All the ingredients are at hand to bake a cake, a tornado cake. This is it. A rope-like funnel drops from the ink-black clouds and meets the ground. The tornado funnel uproots great trees and powders giant rocks. It gouges the earth like an enormous chisel and tears out the forest in its path like a child pulling seedlings from the garden. This is the phenomenal power of nature. The rope-like funnel charges each man's heart with fear. Fear for family, fear for home, and fear for self. This is nature's vacuum cleaner. I've still got the tornado on the radar screen, Mike. Has it changed course? Nope. It's plowing right across Big Mesa, and I hope it keeps on going and up into the mountains. Man alive, I hope it doesn't change course. You'd better do more than hope. You'd better pray. Calling Canyon City? Yeah, we'd better warn them. You'll lose it as soon as the mountains get in the way. We've been fortunate to be able to follow it this far. Oh, I've lost it. The funnel's heading over the mountains toward Canyon City. Hello, Sid? Yeah, listen. We've been following a funnel over the mountains toward Canyon City. That's you, mister. I'm sorry, but that's all I can tell you. Yeah, I'd say you've got about an hour. If it doesn't pull back up again... Okay, Sid, we'll be praying that it breaks up before it climbs over the mountains. Bye. Last year, the same thing. Cougar Canyon and Little Mesa looked like 75 atomic bombs had gone off right over them. Yeah. Someday a twister is going to come right down the shady river valley and clean out the whole place, including Knotty Pine. Don't talk so loud. Maybe Thunderheads have ears. I know what you mean. I wish some of the knuckleheads in this area that do have ears would listen to our plea for an observer system. Mm, yes, so do I. But they've got tin ears, most of them. I hope that vacuum cleaner doesn't double back on us. Boy, look at those thunderheads coming in. Yes, sirree. They're whoppers, all right. They're bulging at the seams with water. Uh, if they drop load, we need boat. They're dropping it now. You can tell by the cloud formations. Say... I hear tell that there was a tornado on the big mesa again. Oh, who's pulling your legs, Stumpy? Nobody. 
Because it won't stretch no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the old timer's right, fellas. Mel and Mike picked the twister up on radar and followed it right to the mountains. Uh, not long way from Knotty Pine and a flat country. Yep. We'll never get one of them mad whirlwinds down here in the valley. Not on your life. Well, we never have. We never will. Uh, I hate to say this, pal, but those could be famous last words. Oh, Bill, come on. You know there's never been a tornado hit this town or even near it. Why, Big Mesa's 50 miles off. It's in high, flat country. Uh, Henry Wright, even my father, Black Wolf, say Mad Wind never hit down there. We've got all the fictions for a wing dinger. But for some strange reason, they don't like this spot, I'm happy to say. Hey, phone's ringing. I'll get it. Never mind, pal. I'll get it. It's probably for me anyhow. Hey, you know, I think Bill's getting jumpy again, just like he did last year. Uh, I remember how he and Weatherman try to start Tornado Observer System. Nobody interested because Tornado never strike here. Yep. I'm a mind free that Bill's barking up the wrong tree. And so are the Weather Boys, for that matter. Right. Say, look at the lightning from those thunderheads. Boy, I sure like to watch a storm come in. Just think of the tremendous power the Lord's got packed into one of those big clouds. Man alive. Uh, it'd make us look like helpless ants. Was the call anything important, Bill? Yeah, that was Mike. They set up a severe storm warning. Let's get moving, fellas. You mean you want us to get laughed at like last year? Remember one thing. Someday, perhaps the tornado will strike Naughty Pine. If it does, this town will be nothing more than a junk pile after it's over. Let's not be guilty of failing to spread the alarm if that ever happens. Okay. I'll cover the hospital in that part of town. Uh, I get Sheriff and his men busy and cover downtown main buildings. I'll cover the radio station in that part of town. I suppose Bart Sneed will shoot off his big mouth again like he did last year. We don't care what that announcer says or does. Get going now. I'll alert the fire towers. Larry, there's a severe storm warning out. Keep your eyes open for a funnel. Okay, Bill. I think it's a waste of time, but orders are orders. Not again this year, Bill. Yes, and it'll be every year from now on, so you might as well get used to it. Keep me informed, Tom, if you see anything. I will. Sure know that I won't be seeing any funnels, but I'll keep a sharp lookout just the same. Doc Sims, there's a severe storm warning out. What? Are we going to get tornado nerves like we did last year? Well, I guess so, Doc. But I'd rather be ready than wish I had been. Well, you're right. I'll have the patients move to protected areas right away. Ed, you better have people in bank go to basement plenty quick. Oh, no. Not again this year, Gray Wolf. Why, this, this is like fire drill in school. Uh, fire drill save plenty lives in case of fire. Bart, there's a severe storm warning out. And it's your duty to spread the alarm the best you can. Okay. But I'm going to laugh at you fellas just like I did last year. Just listen to me on the air if you don't believe me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a quiet and pleasant one it is now that the weather boys and the rangers have called off another false tornado alarm. It appears that we're going to be plagued again this year by a repeat performance of last year's false tornado alarms. Why is it the rangers insist that everybody almost break their necks running for protection from the twisters that never come? Is it that our guardians of the forest can't stand peace and quiet? They like folks worked up and almost hysterical with fear? All this monkey business is a ridiculous waste of time, especially in the light of historical facts. Naughty Pine has never been hit by a tornado. What you do the next time a false alarm is sounded is your business. That big mouth makes me tired. Boy, he sure runs his windmill with hot air, all right. 
Every time a brain cell tries to work, his mouth falls open, a lot of silly noises come out. Oh, Stumpy, you're... Yeah, Bart sure has the knack for getting under your skin like a sliver. Well, don't let him needle you, pal. We've done our work before in the face of ridicule. Um, Bible say, he that control tongue is better than he who conquers city. Yep, it's better to appear to be a fool and keep your mouth shut than to open it and remove all doubt. Yeah, sure. But some folks will take his gas into heart. Maybe they'll live to regret it. Uh, you fellas were giving me the ribbing of my life a while ago about this tornado business. <laughs> sure we were. But that was only between us. As far as I'm concerned, if the weather boys put out the warning, then I'm in favor of heating it. If the warning is a false alarm, then I'm grateful and thank the Lord. That's right, old-timer. Bart has nothing to lose if a tornado strikes. Doesn't have a family here and no property. Of course, he should be thinking about the safety of other people, but he's not concerned. I'd forget about it if I were you fellas. It sure is nice out this morning. The humid feeling's out of the air. Yeah, sure is a nice day. Hey, Bill. Uh-oh, it windbag. Hello, Bart. Hello, Bill. Fellas, say, there's a black cloud up there. Aren't you going to sound another false alarm? Oh, excuse me, that's smoke from a factory chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Bart, uh, you need glasses. When a fella can't tell the difference between a thunderhead and chimney smoke, he should see an eye doctor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll see you later sometime. <laughs> oh, Bill, you were terrific Very on good. the draw. Bart got just what he deserved. Yeah, Paul say he did. That's one time the snake turned and bit its master. Well, I'm afraid we'll have more tornado fixings in here about tomorrow noon. Yes, you're right. Warm and humid and two fronts clashing. Large thunderheads up to 30 and 40,000 feet, which will give us good updrafts and downdrafts. And that's all the makings of some more twisters. You know, Mel, perhaps we're foolish to bother alerting the people in the Naughty Pine area. After all, they've never had a tornado. I wonder if they've really come over the mountains and down the valley. But who are we to make those decisions? We don't control the weather and atmospheric conditions. We only forecast it to the best of our ability. And it's our job to set up the warnings as we see them. Uh, but you know as well as I do that we've watched dark black thunderheads pass over the Shady River Valley time and time again when conditions were prime for funnels. Nothing's ever happened. Well, we won't have to worry about it until tomorrow morning if the forecast holds up. It's early Saturday morning, and the ranchers and farmers are just beginning to stir and think about doing a day's work. Mel and Mike don't plan to set up severe storm warnings until noon, but this time they're going to get fooled. Right beyond the Shady Mountains, a giant of all giant thunderheads slowly moves toward the Shady River Valley and Knotty Pine. The Sleepy Valley and town aren't aware that there's a great danger approaching. The morning's warm and humid, and everyone's thinking of the beauty of spring when suddenly part of the black giant drops down to the ground and a funnel is formed with winds revolving inside from 600 miles per hour. been made in Naughty Pine. A tornado did form in the valley and strike. The citizens are no longer sleepy. They're wide awake and shake with fear. Phone calls come in by the dozens and emergency vehicles are on their way to the stricken area. Bill and his rangers race across town. Boy, it really happened. Where did the funnel strike? Seems to be the high school in that area. Folks are too excited to give accurate reports, but we'll know in a few minutes. Boy, I 
had duck bumps running all over me. Do you think it really happened after so many years of not happening? It's a pretty sobering thought, Sonny. This whole town could be flattened. Yes, sure, like a pancake. Oh, and many people killed. Here we are. Boy, look at the north end of that school. It's a mess. Yeah. Thank the Lord, it's Saturday and there's no school. like only damage done to school and then funnel lifted. Yes, we can be very thankful that the funnel only touched the ground for an instant and then drew back up again. Uh, hello, fellas. Hello, hello, Chief. Howdy, Chief. Hi. Uh, how's it look inside the building? The same as outside, Bill. It's a mess. The whole north corner's been sheared off and pulverized. Yep, the steel girders are twisted like pretzels. Now, Bill, the townspeople are very much interested in starting a tornado observer system. Fine, Chief. Well, when do they want to start? Well, I suggested we have a meeting tonight at the city hall. Set it up. Good people of this town agreed to come. Oh, that's excellent. We'll be at the meeting tonight, and I'll ask Mel and Mike to be there, too. Okay, I'll pass the word. We'll see you this evening. Okay. You know, it's a down shame that folks have to learn the hard way. Yes, sirree, I can't tell them a thing. They've always got to learn for themselves. Yes, Stumpy, this would have been a bitter lesson if this had happened during the school week and not a later on. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief, where's the crowd? Well, uh, they sort of cooled <laughs> off since this morning, Bill. Guess the figure lightning won't strike twice in the same place. How much huh? work is there uh, going to be involved in this tornado observer system? Yeah, yeah I yeah. don't think we should even discuss this plan if more people aren't interested to share the burden of it. <laughs> yeah, I sure. suggest we adjourn this meeting until yeah. we can get more people to attend. Good I agree. I guess good Looks idea. like it's going to take more time than it's worth. Uh, just a minute. Sure. Sure, the twister that struck this morning was a surprise attack. Even the Weather Bureau boys didn't catch it on their instruments. Now, if they had and could have sounded an alarm, an observer system would have saved many lives if the funnel had remained on the ground rather than skip like it did. Yeah, well, perhaps you're right. But I don't think we've got anything to worry about no, anymore. No. I'm not interested any longer. Me neither. Oh, let's go home. Why, this is the first time a twister's hit this town in over a century. Come white man and Indian time. It'll be another hundred years before we get another. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, what do you think of this? I've seen a lot of knuckleheads in my day, but never so many crowded into one town. And Bart Sneed is the biggest. I told you his talking would influence these people. And their logic not good. Lightning does strike same place twice. And sometimes more than twice. Well, I've seen and heard everything now. We've tried tornado every time there was the possibility of one. Finally, the killer wind came. Even then, these people still won't listen to sound advice. And for one reason. Perhaps two reasons. You mean you think there's a reason for their actions? Yes. First reason is that they're too lazy. And the other is that some of them don't care. Say, Bart Sneed's going to be on the air in half an hour. I'd sure like to hear what he has to say. Good evening, good citizens of Naughty Pine. Well, it looks like the weather boys and the rangers almost won their point this morning when the tornado funnel chewed away half the north end of the high school. But I still say there's nothing to get excited about. Why, this is the first time in over a century that this has happened, and the chances of it occurring again are pretty slim. This man talks like about a gambler. He's a special me system, I say let the rangers and weather boys do it. That's what they're paid to do. In just a moment, I'll have a roundup of world and local news for you. You know, fellas, I think you're softening up. I'm inclined to agree with you, Mike. Yes, he seems to be lacking the usual caustic sting he's capable of delivering. Well, I don't know, gentlemen. It sounded to me like his supply of wind is just about as good as ever. Yeah, but he didn't sound like the old ripper up the back that he can be. I'd say Mike is right. But why is Bart changing his mind? Uh, 
All they have to do is look at high school building and think of lives lost if that happened during school day. Not take edge off sharp tongue. I don't know. I've listened to his two-edged tongue for a long time. He's not the kind of man to back off, even if he knows he's whipped. He doesn't have enough sense to come in out of the rain. Don't give up yet. We're still not through fighting for the observer system. Hey, it's the troopers. Oh, no, we didn't do it. <laughs> Hello, Sam. How's the captain of the state police these days? Okay, fellas. How are you? Well, we're pretty busy dodging tornadoes and trying to get ornery people to think straight. Oh, are you joking or is this serious? It's serious. Stumpy just about sized up the whole problem. Now, pull up a chair and relax. Hey, okay, thanks. Now, where do I come in now, or, or do I? Oh, we'd like to have you help us dodge twisters. Of course, you might get twisted up yourself, but then you'll be doing us a favor. <laughs> Sam, I'd like you and your men to cooperate with us in the Tornado Observer well, System. Well, I'd be glad to. You still having problems with the citizenry of this area to cooperate? Yeah, problems ain't the word for it. That windbag, Mark Sneed, keeps leading them down the wrong trail. Might be the death trail unless we do something about it. Well, that's strange. What do you think he's acting this way? Because he hasn't anything to lose. Well, I'm afraid you're wrong there. I don't quite follow you, Sam. Bart hasn't any property or family here. He hasn't any family here yet, but he's got property. Huh? Since when? Right. Didn't you know he bought the old Coswell place? Well, no. Hey, that's right in the middle of Shady Valley at the edge of town. That's right. When did he buy the Coswell place? The deal was closed two days ago. He's bringing his family from Junction City next week. Uh, it took him three years to make up mine. Not a long time to find a place to buy. So, Bart's got a big stake in this tornado business, huh? He's right in the direct line of fire if a funnel comes roaring down the valley. I guess you fellers were right. He did soften up on his last newscast, and this is the reason why. Yeah. Well, let's get back to setting up our own observer system. And Bill, whenever the alarm is sounded by Mike and Mel, I'll have my boys go to a network of high points and watch the Thunderheads. If they spot one, they'll keep us informed by radio. Okay, that sounds fine, Sam. Perhaps we can do a good enough job to keep a tragedy from taking place. I don't think Bill, his rangers, and the state police are going to have to wait very long to find out if their system's going to work or fail. The barometer's dropping at the Weather Bureau, and Mike and Mel anxiously watch their instruments and check their readings and forecasts. Let's drop in on them as they try to outwit the weather and predict its actions right to the nth degree. How's the coffee holding out, Mel? Fine. You want some? Yeah, please. Here, hold your cup so I don't drip this stuff all over the maps and charts. Right. Say when. No. You know, I don't like the nosedive the barometer's taking. Don't like it at all. That's going right through the bottom at this rate. I'd say we're going to have plenty of action about nine in the morning. Let's recheck our work and then sound the alarm. I sure feel better now that the rangers and the state troopers have set up an observer system... I'm afraid that this might be tea hour if the storm comes down the valley. Well, that's right where it's heading, or I'll eat my shirt. <laughs> Buttons and starched collar included. The warning is out. Not severe storms this time, but a tornado alarm's been given. Mike and Mel haven't the slightest doubt. A funnel will drop, and it looks like it might be the Shady River Valley that's getting the pasting. The hub of the observer system is Ranger headquarters. Right now, Bill is the busiest man in the world. Tower 5 reports a tremendous thunderhead black on the inside of a closet, heading right over the valley. Tell him to keep us informed. Stumpy, Grey Wolf, check the schools and hospitals on the double. Tell them to evacuate immediately if they haven't already done so. Right away, Yes? 
Yes? Yes, all right, Mike. Goodbye. Gray Wolf, Stumpy. What you want, Bill? That was Mike. He says that Thunderhead's loaded to kill. Hurry. We're out of ways, hurry. Tower 5 says there's a big sag in the bottom of the Thunderhead. Keep talking to him, pal. Bill, to all towers, come in. Tower 1 in, over. Keep a close watch, Tom. There may be more than one funnel for him. Tower 5's watching the valley. Watch other sectors. Over and out. Tower 2 in. Over. Larry, watch for a funnel on the big mesa. And if it forms, be sure to keep an eye on its course. Over and out. Tower 3 in and over. Fritz, watch Cougar Canyon and Razorback Ridge Country. Let me know the minute you see anything. Tower 4 in and standing by. Amos, don't close even one eye for a second. We could be in real trouble at any minute. Bill, Tower 5, there's a tornado heading right down the valley. How much time do we have? Well, not more than 20 minutes. Henry, sound the disaster alarm. Jim, keep your eye on that thing. I'll keep in touch as often as I can. Henry, stand by the radio after you've sounded the alarm. We've got 18 minutes to spread the alarm. Let's make it 15 to be safe. You know your areas. Have everybody open windows and doors. Then tell them to get into basements or depressions in the ground. Now get going and fast. Has the twister changed its course, pal? Not yet. Jim says it's really chewing up the valley. Bill, are you there? Yes, go ahead. This is terrible to watch. The funnel's going right down the middle of the valley and cleaning out everything in a path about a block wide. Keep watching it. We'll stand by another ten minutes, then we're going underground. Hold on, Sam. Henry, cut off the set and close down the power. Hello, Sam. We're going underground right now. Get help on the way. I'll try to contact you as soon as it passes. Goodbye. Let's get out of here. Right. We'll hide in the hole they've dug for the new house across the street. We'll hide there and pray. The lumber yard disappears into the giant vacuum cleaner. Wait a minute. The funnel is lifting. It, it's drawing back into the cloud. For good, I hope. No, no, now it's down again, but not until it hit the river. Now the twister's running along the river bank and heading out of town. Seven warehouses and a number of small buildings have been obliterated. But praise the Lord, the terrible killer's going out into open country. and the weather boys. And I want to thank Almighty God for sparing us from terrible tragedy. If ever a man was wrong, I was. Bill Jefferson, I want to be the first volunteer for the Tornado Observer System, any hour of the day or night. <sighs> yes, Bart, thank the Lord the Twister didn't blaze a deadly trail right across Naughty Pine. You know, it's the old story with men like Bart and others. They have to learn the hard way, and sometimes that can be disastrous. We'll see you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! <laughs>